So the uh, silo machine build continues. So what I've done now is I've put heated plates in. So this is a heated bed, four separate stations, and the temperature is being controlled by this device, which unfortunately is a 24 volt device. It's what I had. Um, I suppose I could get those at 12 volts and make a whole 12 volt machine. But at the moment, the motors are 12 volts, the heating pads are 24 volts. And oh hey, it'll heat up quicker. These are quite cheap and really simple to wire. There's just a um, positive, negative and a switch and you switch the live on your heating pad. Now, the main thing that I want to share with you actually is how I made these heating pads. These heating pads were just stunningly easy to make uh, and it's not only good, I think, for the Cylon machine, it would also make a really good heating pad for um, 3D printing. Now, what these pads are made of is a cooking sheet out of the local supermarket. It's a bit of steel and it's been Teflon coated and it's actually insulated. So this, this coating here gives a great insulation uh, to the steel, allowing us to put the heating pad directly onto the Teflon coat, which I thought was super cool actually. So I bought four of them, put them in this little grid, little bit of plastic here and these four things here. And if I whack that on, 24 volts and I've set this one. Incidentally, these things are really irritating. They come set for cold, for chilling. You have to actually reset them to heat. So I haven't reset these, I've reset this one and it's belting up now. I've set it at 25, it's 15.7 and it's getting really nice and toasty. So the heat stations work really, really well. So I'm quite pleased about that. Um, you'll also notice this heat station means it, it won't work with the rotating bed. You really have to have it static like this. Uh, let's turn that off because the main thing I want to show you is how these heating pads were made. I mean, I think the machine's looking really quite pretty, but I want to share with you how the heating pad was actually made. So let's turn that thing over and have a look at the backside of it. So here is it tipped on its side and the underside of the machine. Now, these ones have been done. And what I like about them is you can't actually see anything. I think it's really kind of cool. Uh, this is just the wiring loom uh, and everything's been wired in. The circuit here is really quite simple actually, it's just four of them so it leaves a lot of wire. But essentially that's your negative, that's your positive. Your negative goes straight to the negative. Your positive comes down here to the switch in the temperature controller, then back out from there and to your positive supply. So you're switching the uh, live wire is what you're doing. Now the little sensor that comes there has been here and I'll go through what's holding that sensor in place in a minute. And what we're going to do is, this is completely bare, there's nothing on this one. I know it doesn't look any different to here, but there's nothing on that. And we're going to make that one together because it's really stunning, actually. And all I actually did was pop on a couple of copper strips. Straight onto the Teflon back. So there's no preparation with this at all, because like I say, it is actually Teflon coated already. So a couple of copper strips went straight on there. And I tested the resistance and there is no conductivity between the copper or anywhere else on the tin. So a copper strip there. And another copper strip there. Now I'm only using this thickness of copper because it's the tape I have. I think it would work with much thinner tape, but like I say, this is the tape I had, so this is the tape I'm using. And I'm just rubbing it down to make sure that it ad adheres nicely. Okay, so you just put that on. The next thing we're gonna do is uh, solder on a couple of rungs of solder. and then take the neutral wire and solder on the neutral.
And then the same thing with the live. Okay, that's it. <clears throat> now I need a bit of cloth. This is the copper tape I used, incidentally. And to be honest, I think this next bit is magical. So I've done demonstrations painting our ink onto plastic uh, and we're using this on a Teflon coating so it's essentially a plastic and here is just some of our ink. Give it a stir and you want a little bit on a cloth first and then you rub that onto the Teflon quite hard. And that acts like a primer coat. If you don't do that, the ink will bead up and it won't coat. If you do that and leave that to dry, then it primes the Teflon and we can just paint the ink on. So I'm gonna give that a few minutes to dry and then get back. Okay, so I've given that a dry off with an air hairdryer. Now all I have to do is brush on a layer of the ink. and we dry that off with the hairdryer again. So I'm only doing this upright so that you can see, normally I do this flat, uh, that's why we're getting a few more drips than we should do really. So I've given it the first, uh, the primer coat by rubbing it in, dried it, first coat, dried it, and need a second coat and dried, and then you're ready to go. It'll have about a 10 ohm resistor, resistance or something around about there, so not very much at all. So it pulls a lot of power, heat, heat very quickly. Now it's one of those things that I've made this quite a lot actually. I made a cup to boil some tea, I've fried an egg on this, I've used this uh, to heat to low temperatures, and by low temperatures I mean anything up to about 200 degrees C. You should be okay to about 400 degrees C, but certainly 200, 250, no problem at all. This is a, a non-taxing application because as I say, we are not going to go above 80, 90 degrees. And the thing I like about it is how you just can't tell that there's a heating pad there once you've actually finished the paint work. Uh, paint on heater, that's very cool. So all we have to do with this now is dry it one more time and then put the uh, temperature sensor in place. So that's our heat plate done. Now this is actually live, but it's only 24 volts and I mean to bring it down to 12 volts. So to be honest, anybody who's scared of 12 volts needs to come find a soft play area. But we do need to put a little bit of insulation on that metal there. And this is capped on tape, capped on the good to about 400 degrees. So a little bit of capped on there. And that's our temperature sensor and it's going to go there. 
This is best left uh, to dry properly. I force dried it with a hair dryer in about 10 minutes for this video, but you really want to leave it to dry properly. Now, in order to hold this sensor against that plate, what I've made are these little aluminium springs. So it's a bar of aluminium and I put a gooseneck in it and I just jam that in there. And that will twist and press this against the plate. But obviously it's aluminium and it's obviously pressing against a live area. So again, wrap it with some Kapton and you'll get decent insulation between your spring that's holding everything and the live area that's um, there on that plate. The thing I really love about this is how invisible that is. You just can't see that it's there. That goes on there and then that gets jammed in there. See, there we go. And give that, whoops. A twist to hold it in place. So there we go. That's how I made those heating plates. There's my um, Salad printer with all the beds apart from this one. This one's got a fault in here, so I'm going to have to replace that. Uh, heating up rather nicely. Like I said, I've used it for the Silar machine, and I made that by painting our ink directly onto Teflon coated cooking tins. Uh, and that's making a super heater as it happens. So I thought I'd share that with you. Um, one, to show you where we are with the Silar machine. Two, to go through how to uh, make a heat plate that could be used in the Silar, but equally 3D printing. And I hope that was of interest to you. And thank you very much for watching.